Voting is still underway tonight in most of these United States in the much-awaited midterm elections. But soon enough, results will begin to come in as the nation has its say about these candidates and about the past two years and looks ahead. In rain and shine, voters across the country lined up to cast ballots, sometimes in very long lines. Thank my lucky stars. For many, it was a referendum on President Trump's two years in office. Some were poised to deliver an endorsement. Economy, you know, it's awesome that all these people have jobs now. You know, this wouldn't have happened without Trump, I don't think. Others to register their disapproval. Without insulting the current president, uh, I don't like what's happening. Mr. Trump is not on the ballot, but he campaigned furiously right up to last night in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. We have to get out tomorrow and we have to elect a Republican Congress. We have to do it. But many Democrats predicted a blue wave tonight. The uh, uh, enthusiasm that people have, again, not agonizing, but organizing, is going to produce the victory. Control of Congress is very much in play, along with a large number of governor's seats. All 435 seats in the U.S. House of Representatives were on the ballot today. Democrats need a net gain of 23 to win back the majority. In the Senate, 35 seats are at stake. The chamber now has 51 Republicans, 47 Democrats, and two independents who caucus with the Democrats. And 36 states are choosing governors. The current overall roster is 33 Republicans, only 16 Democrats and one independent. How's everybody doing this morning? Candidates on both sides talked up their party's prospects. I feel good. In Florida, Democrat Andrew Gillum, seeking to become the state's first black governor, said his victory would be a statement to Washington. Us winning tonight, I think, will send a message uh, to Mr. Trump and Mr. DeSantis as well uh, that the politics of hatred and of division, of separation, uh, that they've come to an end. In Pennsylvania, Republican gubernatorial candidate Scott Wagner touted his chances. I've turned over every rock, every part of the state. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm optimistic. Uh, I believe we're going to win this. Um, well, I know we're going to win it. All of this depends on voter turnout, of course, and it could hit records. More than 39 million votes had already been cast before today, an increase of 10 million from the 2014 midterms. You will get your regular 8 p.m. numbers. Adrian Fontes holds the office of recorder for Arizona's Maricopa County, encompassing Phoenix. This election is looking more like a presidential election in the amount of ballots that we've got coming in. These midterms are also shaping up to be the most expensive ever. Kantar Media tracks that spending and estimates the total of television and radio advertising has run well over $3 billion. As ever, much of that went for attack ads. The Wesleyan Media Project follows political advertising. Phil Bredesen dangerously wrong for Tennessee. It reports a 61% increase in attack ads over 2014, and many candidates are unhappy about that. Democrat Phil Bredesen is seeking a Senate seat in Tennessee. Some of the things that were said in the, in the ads about me, they're just like not, not tethered to reality, have turned some people off. And Chris Kobach is the Republican running for governor in Kansas. People are just sick of all the negative ads. I've heard that a lot, too, as I've gone around the state, that they're just, you know, they turn them off, they, turn, they hit the mute button on the remote. Back at the ballot box, there have been reports today of extreme weights and malfunctioning machines. U.S. officials also warn that foreign actors, including Russia, China and Iran, have tried to influence the elections, but they said there is no indication that any voting infrastructure has been compromised. Throughout the night, we want to dig into some of these individual races that we're tracking to see where they're headed and what they mean for the bigger picture. Amna Nawaz and Lisa Desjardins walk us through the details in a segment we're calling Here's the Deal. Amna?
Judy, there are literally hundreds of races we're trying to track tonight. And of course, no one knows them better than our own Lisa Desjardins. <laughs> but for the rest of us to try to keep up, we have some tools we're going to be using to track what's going on. So Lisa, walk us through some of these. This is the Senate balance of power. What does it show and what could change? All right, we should tell our viewers, first of all, there are versions of this exact graphic online on our website in which you can interact and you can sort of make them how you want. Look at whatever data you like. This is where we're starting the night, Amna. These are the 65 U.S. Senate seats that are not up for election tonight. So you see here why Democrats are worried, because Republicans, basically, most of their Republican candidates are not on the slate tonight. Look at all of these bubbles on the blue Democratic side. These are Democrats who are on the ballot tonight. As the night goes, you will see these bubbles fill in where you see light colors. That is going to mean that a Republican or a Democrat is leading. The dark colors mean that is a secure Senate seat for that party. So we're going to see these colors start to fill in as the night goes on. But to put some faces to these dots, mm -hmm. uh, we can go a layer deeper, yeah. too. You guys have put together this incredible list. Why why should we care about these people tonight? We talk so much about who's in control, which party, but there's another interesting factor to watch this year, and that is a potential anti-incumbent wave. So these are all the members of the House of Representatives who are on the ballot tonight who are vulnerable. That means they're in one of the top three categories, either a toss-up or a race that is narrowly leaning to one side. They're, we're going to follow their races tonight. As we go, you will see a check mark for those who have been said to forecast to win their race and an X for those who are forecast to lose. So we'll get a sense of whether incumbents are doing well. One other note about this wall of faces, mm -hmm. these are all Republicans on in the House. There is one Democrat, except for one Democrat who is on here from Arizona. The rest of these are Republicans. That's why we have the opposite trend as we do in the Senate. And we should note, too, these are chronologically arranged based <laughs> on poll right. closing time. These will start to fill in with those X's right. and checks. Lisa, I'm looking just at the top row here. Yeah. Three of those are just in the state of Virginia. So if we That's look right. a deeper uh, look right now, just at Virginia, we'll have some of these to uh, take a look at over the course of the night, too. What are you looking yeah. at when it comes to Virginia? Virginia is a key race. Virginia's polls close at the top of the next hour, so it will be an early indicator. And especially, I want to draw folks' attention to this race right here. This is the second congressional district of Virginia. Norfolk is there. That's the U.S. Navy headquarters. It's a traditional Republican kind of bastion. Mm -hmm. However, the representative there this year, Scott Taylor, he is having a run against a fellow Navy veteran, and it's something that Democrats think if this race starts going their way early in the night, they think they'll be able to take the House of Representatives itself. And Virginia is one of those states you're going to be looking to as an early indicator. Is that That's right? That's exactly right. All of these races will tell us something, but I think especially that race down there will be a key indicator, but the entire state is a good one to watch. A lot more states to watch, too. Our own Lisa Desjardins staying on top of all of these races somehow. These are going to be updated not just during our special coverage, but, of course, online anytime. You can go to pbs.org backslash newshour.